Remember back in the 80s? That awesome movie, Revenge of the Nerds! Well, this isn't that, but we are going to nerd out today. Definitely. Let's get on topic. Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona, and you are watching another episode of Toolbox Topic. I'm joined today with my co-host, Wyatt Spaulding. Wyatt! What's up, man? How the hell are you? Doing good, waking up a little still. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so, as you might have gathered from the intro, we're gonna nerd out today. We're gonna be talking about suspension, not just for mountain bikes, because a lot of gravel bikes now have front suspension. Mm -hmm. You have some with a decoupler and everything, and yep, there's different uh -huh. types of suspension. So we're gonna talk about the nerdiness part of suspension. Now you saw the rear shock rebuild, you saw the front shock rebuild, and now we're gonna bring it together with the theory on how everything is supposed to work yep, in an uh -huh. ideal world, Definitely. as far as that goes. Why it's gonna be doing most of the talking, I might ask some questions. Mm -hmm. They might be smart questions, they might be dumb questions. You guys never know what you're gonna get with me, obviously. <laughs> um, but yep, we got the dry erase board and everything like that. And before I forget, I wanna remind you, we are at Trek Bicycle Store of West Phoenix in Goodyear, Arizona. I got no excuse today, I'm not even tired. Although I don't have my coffee with me, so maybe I can <laughs> Maybe I can use that. We got a Keurig out there yet. No, dude, you got to have French vanilla cream. Right? It's got to be <laughs> French don't. vanilla, dude. You got the garbage half and half, man. But As long as you're not branding with that fucking Jamaican me crazy bullshit. Oh, you can't do that, dude. You can't. Well, he's a roadie, though. He, he so is. He we is. will try not to hold it against him. He doesn't him, do so. with much of this, but. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> he's all. Anyways, though, proper. yeah. So I thought it'd be uh, definitely good to go over just advanced suspension setup and kind of like I think it'd be good for everyone to understand how everything works absolutely um, because that aids in fine-tuning your suspension most be a lot of people at least me working at the shop I experience it here a lot of people put it at a certain pressure they think they're in the right area and they just ride it forever and maybe it works well that way but there's so much to adjust there's so many things you can do with air suspension nowadays so you know, there's a lot of adjustability and you, you might be able to make it feel a lot better than what you've ever thought it could. You nice, know? nice. So I, I know this is all going to be a new hat for me. I look at, hey, there's my weight, mm, there's mm. what I should adjust it to, yeah, and uh -huh. I kind of go, so this is gonna be good. Yeah. Although, remember when uh, you put that upgrade from RockShock yeah. and my bike, it had that adjustability yep. on a tie. I did mess with that and uh -huh. it, did, it took a couple rides, but I got it tuned yeah. to where it just felt so nice. Yep. Uh -huh. So I don't understand why it worked, but I know it just worked. It worked, yeah, it's an no. upgrade. So pretty much um, everyone knows that we're all pretty much using air suspension now. So you're, you're adjusting, pretty much only thing most people are gonna adjust is a little bit of compression rebound and their, their spring rate, how much pressure they have. Um, but no one really knows how to start necessarily um, most of the time and, and what they should be checking first, what they should be setting first. Um, so we're gonna go over a couple things, just how everything's working together. Um, and I guess we could start with our spring rate. Um, everything that I'm going to talk about the fork primarily, everything that really applies to the fork though applies to the rear shock as well. Um, they both work in very similar designs, um, so everything still kind of applies, um, and I'll go over that a little bit as well. Um, but ideally though, starting to set up your suspension, you're going to want to set up your spring rate and your air first. Um, and you want to you want to make a couple decisions. Um, so you hear sag a lot, you've probably heard the sag term. Right. Um, you're, ideally most times looking for 20 to 30 percent somewhere within that range um, so that you know you're getting off the what does that travel. even mean as far as like that when people talk about the uh -huh. sag rate what exactly does that mean so you you always see that little o-ring on your on your stanchions right and it's hard to see right now when we just have the upper unit drawn um, but you're looking when you're weighted on your bike especially on the fork you want to be in a standard up riding position um, just the weight in your gear you want to see how much of that suspension travel you're using. Okay. And you want to be ideally 20 to 30 percent of your total travel. Okay. So if you're running with a 150 millimeter fork, you know you do 150 times, you know, 0.2 if right. you're looking for 20 percent, and you're looking for that many millimeters of whatever value you get of, okay. of sag. Um, and, and that's a good starting point. Once you're at a good sag, you know that. Um, one, the geometry that you're riding your bike at is correct because if you're running a 50% sag on your fork, oh yeah, you're way your too head much angles, over. your head angle is very steep right. and it's not going to ride good, and your bottom nothing, bracket's lower. Nothing good about a bad head angle, guys. Remember yeah. that. <laughs> uh -huh. And for full suspension, it's very, 
very smart um, to get both your sags in sync together because of that. You want your geometry to be where it's supposed to be. Smart. You know, if you're 50% on the shock, blowing through your travel and 10% sag up front, the thing's gonna ride like a, a boulder rolling down a hill. You know, so you wanna get your, your sag at that 20 to 30%. And then you wanna, you wanna go ride a little bit. Um, set all your compression on your damper to just fully open. Um, don't necessarily worry about the rebound too much yet. Just make sure it's, it's everything's popping, popping back fast. Right. Um, and a lot of instances, um, you'll see like when I got a, a brand new bike, um, a lot of these forks come with a lot of volume spacers in them. I would get, I started with 20% sag and I'd go for crazy rides. I'd be going down crazy drops and stuff. And then I would check my sag ring afterwards. Um, and I would only be using about that much travel. Okay. So that's, you know, bottom out point's gonna be closer up to there. That's a whole probably 10 millimeters that I'm not using, right. even though I'm at that 25 to 30% sag. Um, so in that case you say, okay, what's stopping the suspension from using all that travel? Cause right. I have this beautiful fork, why am I not gonna use all that? Um, and that's where the science, the nitty gritty science comes into play a little bit because we're dealing with air volume. Um, so you obviously see we're gonna be pumping air at some point into the positive chamber, which is what we call this area of the fork. I can't spell right now. We'll call it the PC. Yeah, the PC, that works. The PC. So there's obviously a, a specific area of volume in there, correct? Um, and we have volume spacers in there as well. A air spring is very, if we had a chart um, for the progressiveness of an air spring, it's very exponential towards the end. So it's pretty linear until you get towards the end of your travel. And then, and what I'm talking about here is if we had a normal spring that looked like this, real springs, not air springs, are very linear. If you looked at a graph of one like this, it would, it would look something like that. And what I mean by that is if we compress this spring 10 millimeters about, and say we compressed it with that 10 millimeters with like 10 pounds of force, another 10 millimeters would take 10 pounds of force. Right, that right? linear. Uh -huh. And then for this though, the first 10 milliliters might take 10 pounds of force, the second might take, you know, 12. And, and then, then once you get to that end, it's gonna take, you know, 30, 40 to get right. that same 10 millimeters. Um, so that's that's a benefit of air suspension is because you can you can run it kind of softer on the top end and not bottom out. But if you're in a situation like I was, you're at 20% sag, even, maybe you can go to 30% sag and you're starting to kind of soak into your suspension too much and you're not getting your full travel, you need to remove volume spacers. Okay. Um, because if you remove volume from the positive chamber, your graph is going to start to look a little more linear. So if I took all my volume spaces out, it might look something like that, you know? Um, right. So that might be ideal. A lot of people don't really understand what the volume spaces are doing and maybe they're not I'm getting- I'm one of them. Maybe they're not getting, I've seen people even, they're not getting full travel. So they put volume spacers in and then they run less pressure. And it's like, you're worsening the issue yeah, here. That, you, yeah. You're counterproductive yeah, on you're that. You're completely that worsening the issue yet. Hey, Doug, are you paying attention? <laughs> you thought you adjusted your suspension the right way on your new, your new uh, pivot bike? Pay attention. <laughs> Pay you attention, might, yeah. You might learn uh -huh. something. All right, I'm joking. And, and a lot of people too will prefer naturally um, a more linear suspension setup. Um, just because it feels more fluid and it's, it's more less natural. of a harsh bottom out. Um, some people like, like downhill riders, free ride riders, they're going to run a lot of volume spacers because they'll just blow through travel. Um, but if you're trail riding, if you're just, uh, you're not hitting too crazy gnarly of stuff, bl very linear suspension setup normally feels really good. Right. Mm -hmm. now, so what about someone like a rider like me, because mm -hmm. you know I all ride anything. Mm -hmm. I can give two shits. Mm -hmm. So from the gnarliest downhills and I'm just beating the piss out of it to like, oh, I'm at Brown's Ranch and I'm hanging out with yeah. the rest of the Scottsdale uh -huh. tools. How would you, what would be the ideal so you're not monkeying around mm -hmm. every ride trying to readjust your suspension? Readjust it, yeah. How, how mm -hmm. would you go about adjusting a front shock for someone like me? Definitely, yeah, so I would say do all of this. Once, the nice thing about the spring rate and getting your air volume down, is it's pretty much like once you get it, you get it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, you might, you know, say you've done a lot of experiments and you you like your fork at 80 psi. 
put that in your journal. And if you say you're going up to Flagstaff and it's a lot rockier up there, maybe add five PSI, maybe three PSI, something, you know, small adjustments. But knowing that um, 80 PSI is your happy medium. Your happy you medium. Up or down, and depending know, on. Yeah, know how many volume spaces you have in there, if you've taken out some or removed some. Um, but that's going to pretty much stay a constant. Um, the nice thing about um, having the other controls on the fork is you can use those to your benefit too. Um, if you are going to different conditions. Right, because um, mine so, has micro adjustments on the other side. Yep, uh -huh. so yeah, we can talk about the dampening now. So we have, say we have, you, uh, you got your 20% sag, you went out for some hard rides, you realized you weren't getting full travel still, so you kept your pressure the same, you removed a token, now you're getting full travel pretty much, you're still at the 20%, sweet. You've got your air spring set perfect. Um, now you move on to your rebound um, and your compression damping. Um, so here, you obviously see we have air in here, that's a whole spring system. Over here in the damper unit, most of them, this would be a very basic diagram of a dampening unit. You would have some little reservoir in here filled with oil. Um, and then you're going to have obviously a shaft here with a seal head on it, kind of like you see on the air spring, right. with some, some holes in it, pretty much. Um, and those knobs you're doing are spinning little holes on there. Um, on your shim stack, which allow m either more oil to pass through or, or less. less oil as this shaft is going up and down through that bath of oil as you're using your suspension. Um, so high speed, low speed compression is going to be really hard to kind of show how those shim stacks right. work on this. Yeah. But the most basic damper you could have with just a basic low speed compression on the top and just a low speed rebound on the bottom, it's pretty simple how it works. As your, your travel is moving upwards, you're moving through oil, and if you're using compression, it's going to slow that down. Right. So if you're just blowing through your travel too fast, you could use a little bit of compression to stiffen that up a little bit. Um, and then as this is going to be moved, say your seal head is up here now, your whole shaft's up there, and it's moving back down, that's when your rebound comes into play. Right. So you don't want... You don't want those ports to be too closed off where you go into your travel and you're, you know, your forever taking, rebound. it's sucking all that oil through super slow. You don't want right. that. So that's, um, that's something to kind of play with. Um, you, you typically set your rebound dampening in a relative manner to your spring rate. You want it to be perfectly kind of slowing it down on the way back up where your forks and your, your shocks not bouncing off the ground, but okay. it's just perfectly absorbing that. Um, but that's stuff that's just really, you're going to have to fine tune it to how you feel. You know, the, it's really easy to get the spring and stuff set up because you'll, you'll know if you're using full travel and you're at your right sag, you right. know. Um, otherwise, though, the, the rebound and the compression, that's going to totally depend on how you're riding, you know, and where you're riding. So. Now, in one of the bike packing episodes that mm -hmm. we talked about, um, you alluded that you know you when you set this you put your gear on mm -hmm. and water but half the amount of water you carry so yeah. you can get an uh -huh. accurate weight correct um, uh -huh. which is something you know I want to remind you guys because when you initially set this based on manufacturer spec on your weight and everything you want to have an accurate weight mm -hmm. so for not ladies but men are quite vain with this as well get your fat ass on a scale yeah. see how much you actually weigh okay I weigh myself every Sunday just to make sure I maintain and I'm somewhere about a buck and five okay <laughs> No lie, but with my gear, my water, and everything, yeah. you're going to add another several pounds. Mm -hmm. You're not riding your bike naked, hopefully. Yeah. Um, so just be accurate, and, and the more accurate you are on the initial mm -hmm. um, setting of the, the, the air pressure and your weight and everything yeah. like that, uh -huh. the better off you're going to be as exactly. far as that goes. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. Don't guess. So it's, you're not a size I five. I think it's pretty simple. Do you kind of understand a little bit more how everything's oh, working? Oh, absolutely. In, in it totally makes sense. To each other? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's really No longer voodoo really magic. Cool. And suspension design has come such a far, far way. You know, these things used to be a lot weirder. Now you see on these forks you have, if we actually pulled some uppers out, there's a little dimple on this seal head right here where you have a negative chamber right here, um, which is why we'll the call forks... It the MC. Yeah, that's just why the forks feel so good nowadays because you have a direct equal pressure to what you have in your positive chamber with most of the modern forks now. You right. used to, there used to be some Fox forks where instead of an air chamber here that would fill and equalize, you had a legitimate spring there. And that was your I only... remember that. So you think you're, you're pushing air in with your shock pump, it's going to push this seal head down. It's going to preload that spring, right? right? But 
that spring is going to be a constant spring rate. You can't change that. Suspension forks are so badass now because there's that little air passivity port right there. You put 90 PSI in, in here. Holy smokes. Oh, shoot. Right? <laughs> we'll cut that, yeah. Yeah. So we, we leave those in, dude. All right. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny because when Brandon's here, and you guys will see it on this week's episode coming up, not, well, the one that's going to be, you'll have already seen it by now. Mm -hmm. But whenever he goes out, he just like literally starts dancing and everything. Oh, and then the, the so turn always on. just like, oh, leave shit. that. Right. And... Well, sometimes <laughs> the lights turn off. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but if we put 90 PSI in here and we cycle that fork, air is going to pass through into our negative chamber, and then that's going to be at about 90 PSI as well. Right. And then as this we use our travel and this seal head moves up that they call it the negative chamber because that's going to fall down to zero psi and then into the negative which is going to try and suck your your fork back, back to down. where it's supposed to be because it's looking for that yeah, equilibrium exactly and that's where you get that because it, it, it has that equilibrium at that spot and that's always going to be the equilibrium right. when you have the the specific volume that you have up there and down there because there's a seal head here there's a seal head there. So whatever air is in there is locked in there. If you've got 90 PSI in there and 90 PSI in here, it's always going to be equal right there. It's going to be locked in there though. So, you know, as that starts moving up, you're going down to 80, 60, 50, you'll hit zero here. And then you're going into like negative right. pressure, you know, at that point that's, that's sucking it back down. Um, and it, it goes for the same way. Everything you see on the rear shock is, is everything in the fork, just in a smaller, cooler setup. Right. You know, you see the same thing here. We have a positive chamber where you normally would put your your um, your tokens right. if you need more progressivity. Um, so you'd put those there. You've got a negative chamber there, and then you've, you're going to have the same kind of deal there—a little dimple there where air can pass through between the two chambers and they can equalize. Right. Um, and then you have the whole damping unit right there too, though. Your oil is going to be in here now, and that's going to be where your shim stack is as well. So it's it's everything you see here combined into one. Right. Now, if you guys remember when we did the rebuilds, okay. Um, we definitely had a little bit more of a detailed as far as the taking apart, mm -hmm. you know, on this one with the camera set up. Remember, we can get a third camera if you guys start hitting <laughs> like and subscribe more. Yeah, help um, so. But you can actually go back to those videos and I will put the links to both those videos down below because as we disassemble that and why it does a great job of going through the pieces and everything like that, you'll, you'll really get a chance to see this and, and how it works as far as mm -hmm. coming apart and going back together and, and how that all comes to play um, to work in unison to allow for a properly tuned suspension yep mm -hmm. as far as that goes and that's that's really pretty much it as long as you understand what everything is doing if you understand how a basic air spring works um, you're going to understand how to get it set up for what you want out of your suspension right. if you understand how basic dampening works you're going to understand exactly what every click of that rebound does for you right. and you're going to be able to feel it more too because you're you know what to look for right. you know and then like for that instance, it always gets crazier. You got that new upper unit for, for your Lyric or your Yari or whatever it was. Right. And you had, what was it, high speed compression now was that you didn't have before? Right, it was uh -huh. a full upgrade on the internals and everything. So yeah. not only did uh -huh. I have that, that blunt adjustment, I had yeah. that fine tune adjustment on top of that. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, where the one had like five clicks, this one has like 20 clicks yep. to really fine tune it yep. in. Uh -huh. um, and it did some adjustment on the trail now after even like I said guys this is a new hat for me so after learning I guarantee within the next couple of weeks I'm going to pay more attention yeah and uh -huh. I'm going to start trying to dial it in now the stuff that we're talking about today some of you may get it right off the bat some of you may already know it mm -hmm. if you have any questions about this guys seriously I stress comment down below we'll do our best to answer it in a great way or if you would like maybe a video mm -hmm. and we'll have a bike and we'll zoom in and we'll kind of show and we'll you know, maybe ride out in the lot or maybe we'll do it out yeah. where the weather's cooler or something like that yeah. to show you how to do this. It, it seems complex and daunting now, but I guarantee you, just like when you were a kid and the first time you changed your oil or brakes or something yeah. like that, you do it enough, you get to learn your bike, it, it's really going to be like yeah. second nature and it's going to pay dividends on the trail. You're going to yeah. notice an uh -huh. improvement in your ride, probably handling and stuff like yeah. that. Uh -huh. Maybe this answers some questions why your front suspension feels so chunky or it yeah. always feels uh -huh. like your rear suspension is bottom out or stuff like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. This can really affect your ride, guys. So, um, yeah, definitely. All right. Well, why? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. See, and you guys thought we were just crazy bastards. We're nerds. Yeah, we're nerds. We're nerds. We, we can nerd out. Oh, yeah. Know. We like to mess around, but... Goddamn right we can nerd out. <laughs> you guys thought I wasn't going to come make an appearance. 
What? Where's Brandon? I heard he's on vacation. Brandon's on vacation. God damn it. He's up in Pine. Oh, dude, there's no good hookers in Pine. What the hell is he there doing out there? There shit up in Pine, dude, except for God dirt, damn dust, dirt. That's mm. right. I'll see him next week. <laughs> but yeah, thanks thanks for uh, tuning in. I, th- I think it's pretty cool how far suspension has come, you know? It used to be goddamn springs in there and... Well, a damper is as basic as this drawing right here. That used to be all people had. Well, you guys you know? got that Trek 9300 out there. Yeah. It's uh-huh. Carbon tubes and that. And looking at that thing, that thing's a relic. And mm-hmm. I think about my first mountain bike, the Trek 7000. Yeah. And my first shock, a Marzocchi 400 XC. Dude, we're talking Stone Age. You yeah. might as well have a protruding forehead and you're not even hitting flint rocks together. You're waiting for lightning yeah. to strike to give you fire. It, um, oh, my God. Night and day. For anybody who's my age, and Wyatt, I mean, you're younger mm-hmm. than I am by, by half my age, yeah. more than that. He's actually younger than my kids. <laughs> but it, at the time you've been riding, you've seen yeah. a lot of changes. So in yeah. uh-huh. every few years, the technology really does improve. Mm-hmm. Now, does the complexity improve? Sure. Yeah, definitely. So you can't have mm-hmm. one without the other. But... Um, how it has improved the uh, ride and the ability to navigate tough terrain in mm. a safe manner. And again, yeah. I'm not saying there's not a place just like the IG post I made for analog bikes. There's something to be said about that. Yeah. Uh-huh. But there's also something to be said to getting off the trail after 25, 30 plus miles and not being beat to piss. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Legit. I'd rather enjoy the rest of my day instead of going, fuck, I'm beat up like yeah. a dirty prostitute in Pine Top. Yeah. Joking, guys. <laughs> Joking. So, all right. Well, guys. There you have it. The science behind the suspension, the nerdiness part of it. Wyatt, I can't thank you enough for uh sharing that with us today. I definitely learned something new. I hope you guys learned something new. So with all that being said, there's going to be some links down below. One, to check Bicycle Store of West Phoenix in Goodyear, Arizona. Follow that link. If you have any questions, feel free to call Wyatt, Brandon. One of the guys here will definitely be more than happy to help you. Or if you're local, stop on in and shop. And ask them, bring your bike. Mm-hmm. Have them help you learn about your bike. That's what we do these videos for, okay? Yep. There's also going to be a link for our Facebook and our Instagram. Follow those if you want the day-to-day skinny on what we're doing, where we're traveling, the cool things we have coming up. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and notification bell icon. So every time we post a new video, you'll be the first to know, one of the first to know. I'm the first to know because I'm usually the one that schedules it, but that's beside the point. And that's it, guys. I don't know what else to say. We have some cool stuff coming up, though. I will say that. So, number one, this is our 25th episode of Toolbox Topic. Silver anniversary, right? Is that what 25 is? Halfway to 50. I don't know. Okay. Well, (laughs) it's it's lavender. It's a lavender series, I guess. There we go. Who knows? I don't know. But it's our 25th episode. Guys, we can't thank you enough for your support. It's been fun making these. I can't wait to share the next 25 with you. It is. We love love nerding out. So, if you like it, too, let us know. We'll do it more. Now, today is June 17th. On the 29th, mm-hmm. Wyatt and I are actually going to Flagstaff, and we're going to do an on-trail two-box topic, and then yep. we're going to do some riding, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy that. Um, Brandon will be back next week, hopefully, unless he decides to go on vacation again. Oh, does he really deserve a vacation? He does, man. He, yeah, he that's does. true. He is he a hard does. worker, so okay. Does, I won't yeah. give him crap about that. Maybe when he comes back, he'll have his moustache again, though. We'll hopefully, see. Hopefully. So. That thing was rad, dude. That thing was rad. Freddie Mercury like a mofo. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> or a village person. Whatever. Anyways, guys, I digress. Seriously, though. We love you. We thank you for your support. We enjoyed doing this, and we couldn't do it without you. So remember what we say above all else. Be kind to yourself and others. Be amazing stewards out on that trail. And we have to ask, what are you waiting for? Get out Arizona. We will see you on the next adventure. Peace. Wyatt, thanks again, man. Yeah, of course. Have a great day. Wonderful. We'll see you guys next time. Cool. That was good. That was good, dude. Love the one. I'm not the best teacher.